Hi everyone and welcome back to Bloom Home and Garden. Today I'm in the kitchen because I want to make for you my favorite make ahead meal. This meal is so quick, easy, inexpensive, and chocked full of yummy goodness. You can even change up a lot of the additives and ingredients to your favorite ingredients so it's totally versatile. You could just pop it in the freezer and then you can And then you can grab it when you're walking out the door. You can make it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, brunch, any of those. My personal favorite is to take this camping. I can make it at home, freeze it ahead. When we get the urge to go, I just grab it out of the freezer, pop it in the cooler. And then when we're camping, we have a great nutritious meal. And I hope that you will like it. Let's dive in and get cooking. So what I'm going to be making for you is some breakfast burritos and we're just going to run through our list of ingredients. My chickens have just been laying eggs over time and so I have a lot of eggs left over and if you have chickens who... Okay, so we're going to be making some breakfast burritos and I'm going to go over our list of ingredients and first we're going to have some eggs. My chickens are really laying eggs over time, so if you have chickens who lay a lot of eggs, this is a great recipe for using those eggs. I have a pound of sausage, and this is maple flavored sausage, and then I have some spinach, some onion, I have some seasoning salt. Now this one, uh, you can get at Aldi's, and it is their version of Mrs. Dash, so it's the salt-free spicy spices. And then I also have some Mexican shredded cheese. And then finally, we're going to put this together using these Olay wraps. These are pretty healthy. There's no homogenized oils, no sugar, no cholesterol. There's only 5 grams of net carbs and high in fiber. So these are the spinach and herb variety. So very healthy. And they're my favorite with wrapping these up. These give it a really great taste. So let's get started. We are going to start off with placing our sausage in the pan and go ahead and cook that. We're going to turn it down so it's not cooking too fast. Sausage is pork and it is one of those meals that you have to absolutely cook thoroughly for human consumption. So we want to cook it at a lower temperature to make sure it's done inside and out. And we want to take the extra time to break it up small, as small as possible. That's going to be our focus throughout this recipe is keeping that sausage broken up small. And speaking of the recipe, this is a place where you can make it versatile. You can use chorizo and have chorizo and eggs. You could do the little sausage links and cut them up in here. You could do ham or bacon. You could even make this a steak and egg burrito by cooking your steak and then chopping it up really, really small. You could even use leftover meat for this um, and, and that would just have to heat it up. It's great for the meat and vegetables if you have leftovers and you want to use those up as well. Now, speaking of vegetables, I'm going to go ahead and prep mine since I have to be right here watching these eggs. I'm just using red onion and spinach because that's what I had on hand. But again, this can be completely versatile. You can use broccoli, green and red pepper, which I've used before, and that is amazing. It tastes so delicious. You could do mushrooms. Those would be great. And uh, kale also. Anything that you could put in an omelet, you can put in this burrito and it would be yummy. So this is a good time to get that done. And now my veggies are prepped. And we're going to get started on the eggs. And like I said, I have chickens and I have an abundance of eggs and I don't want them to go to waste. So this is a great recipe if you have an abundance of eggs. And it's great too because eggs are a, it, in the grocery store, they're pretty affordable. So it's a great cheap meal. And you could do this uh, by separating your egg yolks. You could use egg beaters to make it healthier if that's what you want to do. Again, it's completely versatile. And I'm just whipping this all together and blending, blending, blending those eggs. We want to make sure that our yolks and our whites are blended really well. And then I'm just going to turn my attention back to the meat and see how it's doing. It's coming along. And again, going to take the opportunity, like I said, 
We're just going to keep breaking this meat down and making sure that it's cooking evenly. We don't want any hard crispies and we don't want any big raw chunks. So it's just making sure, spending the time to get in there and keep it broke up and keep our eye on it to make sure that it's not cooking too much. It's coming along well. So now we're going to turn our attention back to the eggs and finish those. I'm going to start with some seasoning. Now I'm going to use that seasoning that we talked about in the beginning from Aldi. And it uh, has a lot of dried herbs and veggies in there. So it adds a lot of great flavor. So it, I know it has like dried peppers and paprika and all those good things. So I'm going to put that in there. I also am going to add a lot of pepper. I love pepper in my eggs and uh, just a dash of salt. You could even add some herbs to this. You could add parsley. You could add cilantro, oregano. All of those are great herbs and you could add them in too for great seasoning, great taste. And that again is just blend, blend, blend. And my next secret is to add milk in. Milk helps make the eggs fluffy. You can even add a little water. I'm using almond milk. You could use whatever milk or water you have on hand. It just adds some air and helps make it light and fluffy. Now it looks like our meat is finally done. And I just want to check to see how much fat we have in this pan. Do we really need to drain this? Some pork is lean and some is not. And this is how I always strain my meat. I just pull it all up to the top of the pan and give a little squeeze pressure against the meat and you can see the all the fat run down and yes friends we definitely want to drain this meat so this is how I do it I use a paper plate it has the higher edge so it kind of holds it all down in there you don't have to worry about it spilling I never ever ever strain meat down the sink that can solidify and cause a lot of problems in your drain pipes so I never ever do that. And now I'm just gonna put a little oil in the same pan because our, our flavors from our sausage are still in there. So we're gonna to continue to add that to our eggs. So I've got my oil in my pan and I'm gonna add my vegetables. I'm gonna put in my onion and you could add garlic here as well or shallots or chives, whatever you wanna put in here. And you wanna cook your vegetables based on their thickness. So if it's like broccoli, you're gonna put that in the pan first and then your peppers and so on and so forth. And the easiest to, and quickest to cook is gonna go in last, like mushrooms would go in last here. And once they're all softened, you're gonna go ahead and add the egg. And I just let that egg set up for just a minute to start cooking. And I wanna tell you a story of how I used to cook eggs by just turning the burner on high and scramble, 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 and get them done quickly. And I was never really satisfied with them, but they're scrambled eggs, right? Are they really supposed to taste good? But I watched an interview of Sir Ian McKellen, and he was given a demonstration on how he cooks eggs. And I'm thinking like Gandalf would know how to cook an egg. I mean, he's a wizard, right? And so I followed his technique and my eggs have turned out great since then. They are light and they are fluffy and they are always perfect so I am glad I caught his interview and so it's slow it's slow and low that's the key for cooking eggs and you can't be impatient when you're scrambling eggs you gotta you gotta let them cook slow and I also I'm just gonna go in just like the sausage and keep breaking it up as it's cooking because we don't want any large chunks of egg in our burrito because then it just kind of spills out and goes everywhere. So just low, slow, break it up. Since I'm here babysitting these eggs, it's a good time to warm up these wraps. Not doing a full cook. I mean, they really don't have to be fully cooked. Um, I mean, they're fully cooked, right? So it's just the heat up so that makes them pliable because we're gonna be folding them when we make the burrito. They have to be warm. You could do this in the microwave, but I'm right here at the stove. I think it's healthier to do it at the stove. So. It just takes a couple of seconds to go ahead and heat these wraps. That's what we're doing. Now we're going to go back to the eggs and uh, finish them up. I'm going to add in the spinach because it takes the least amount of time to cook. And it wilts very quickly, as you can see. It looks like you're putting in a ton of spinach when you plop it in there. But as you watch and see, as the water drains out of spinach, it just steams right out. It 
turns into nothing. It sees so quickly, it just turns into nothing. Now, I've turned the heat up on these eggs a little bit, as you can see it's steaming, and I'm working very quickly because the water from the spinach is in the eggs, and you don't want mushy eggs either. You don't want them gooey. That would be totally not good. So uh, you turn that heat up a little bit and it helps get the water out faster. Looks like they're all done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in our sausage and just blend that all together. You want an equal amount of sausage and eggs, so you wanna blend it really well, mix it all together to make sure that there's total equal amounts. And then we're gonna add in the cheese. I don't like to add in too much cheese because you know cheese isn't always that healthy, but um, it does add a great texture and it does help pull them together. And of course, cheese is tasty. We're not going to lie about it. Cheese is great. So now we're going to start putting our burrito together. I've got my softened shell. I've put it down the middle. Now fold it over, pull it back, and you just want to keep a good amount of pressure so that all that is in there. Then you fold the left side, then the right side, and then fold it over one more time. And there you have it. You've just assembled your first burrito. And we're just gonna continue on and um, fill these burritos. I just wanna take a moment again to thank everyone for coming along. Oh, I was, make sure you don't get too much to the side so you have that folding room. But thank you all for coming along today. And um, how would you use the comment section below to let me know how you would make these burritos your own? How would you make the meat, what meat would you use, what vegetables would you use, would you use eggs or would you use egg substitute? I'm very interested to know and I'm sure everyone else would love to hear how you would make them. Always a great idea to share recipes and how you would do it. It gives everybody new ideas and I would love to hear how you make them. So go ahead and share that below. Of course, if you're new, thanks again for stopping by and uh, please take a moment to say hi and let us know where you're from and uh, what you love most about these burritos and uh, be sure to subscribe, join the community and be here with us throughout our journey. So here we are, they're all done. You could leave it at this, just totally fine. Or what I like to do is put them in a pan, no oil, cook them for a couple minutes and crisp them up they'll get crispy on the top so then when you're reheating them there's a little more body to them and when i take them camping it's it's always better and you could totally individually wrap them in foil if you're going to heat them on the grill or in a fire i cook mine in a cast iron skillet so i don't reheat them or if i'm home and i have them and i just want to pop one in the microwave um, when you freeze these you can take them out one at a time that's what makes it so great is it's good for one person it's good for four people however you want to do it guys that is it for this video thanks so much for coming along while i prepared my favorite make and take meal i hope you enjoyed watching me prepare this for you and if you like breakfast burritos give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any other videos hit that red button and ring that little notification bell and you will be notified the next time i post a video. So until then, friends, be blessed and be safe. I'll see you soon.